Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? I thought so. It's a story that most Star Wars fans have heard a thousand times. But it paints a somewhat incomplete picture of Darth Plagueis. We all know of his ability to manipulate midichlorians, but relatively few Star Wars fans know about his unique takes on Sith ideology and the Force. Darth Plagueis didn't just want to control life and death or rule the galaxy, he also wanted to completely reinvent how the galaxy saw the Force. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the philosophy of Darth Plagueis and seeing if it holds any water. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Born as Hago Damask, Darth Plagueis started life as a science experiment. His Moon parents had hooked up at the request of Dark Lord of the Sith Darth Tenebris, who selected them for the express purpose of conceiving a child that would be extremely strong in the Force. Tenebris's little experiment worked, and when young Hago Damask displayed signs of Force sensitivity, Tenebris claimed him as his new Sith apprentice, naming him Darth Plagueis. Tenebrus, as we've discussed in the past, had his own unique outlook on the Force. A scientist by nature, Tenebrus believed that the best way to defeat Jedi was to make them obsolete by advancing technology to the point where neither the Force nor an order of peacekeepers were necessary. Plagueis ended up developing a much different grand plan and a different outlook on the Force, but traces of Tenebrus' philosophy lived on in his apprentices. In particular, Plagueis, like his master, was a committed scientist, though in his day-to-day -day guise as Hego Damask, he posed as a banking executive instead. After becoming Dark Lord of the Sith and taking Darth Sidious as his apprentice, Plagueis started setting his own grand plan in motion, scheming to take over the Republic and engineer a war to destroy the Jedi and strengthen the Sith's political power base. But as time went on, Plagueis became fixated on other projects of his, leaving matters related to the grand plan to his apprentice. While Sidious laid the groundwork for the Sith's takeover of the galaxy, Plagueis cloistered himself in his laboratory on the remote moon of Sojourn, where he experimented on ways to control midichlorians. The goal of Plagueis' experiments was to fulfill the age-old desire of the Sith Lords to discover a means of achieving eternal life. He was eventually successful. Plagueis developed techniques to control midichlorians on a mass scale, enabling him to kill and resurrect beings through their midichlorians alone. He also developed ways of regenerating damaged or aged tissue in his own body, allowing him to live indefinitely. Of course, Darth Plagueis did not live indefinitely. In his arrogance, he failed to see that his apprentice was plotting against him, and when Plagueis got drunk and fell asleep while he and Sidious were celebrating the latter's ascension to Supreme Chancellery, Sidious murdered his master. Darth Plagueis' techniques to control midichlorians died with him, and no one, not even Darth Sidious, was ever able to replicate them. This was likely because Plagueis' techniques derived from a unique, staunchly materialist outlook on the Force. You see, Darth Plagueis was essentially an atheist. He believed that all the mystical characteristics usually attributed to the Force were all just superstitions built around a poorly understood, solely material phenomenon. Plagueis was convinced that, as the saying goes, magic's just science that we don't understand yet. To him, there was nothing supernatural about the Force. It was all either explainable by regular natural processes, or in the case of things like Force ghosts, was just superstition. He didn't believe in prophecies, the will of the Force, or any sort of Force-related afterlife, attributing both the Jedi's oneness with the Force and the Sith's experience of Hell to spontaneous neural activity triggered by the onset of brain death. Plagueis also didn't believe in Force Ghosts, a view he firmly maintained even after having an argument with the spectre of Mark Aragnos on Korriban. In other words, Plagueis was a materialist, or someone who believed that the observable, verifiable material world was all that existed. That wasn't a unique philosophical outlook in the Star Wars universe, but what made Plagueis different was how he incorporated the Force into it. It gave him an understanding of aspects of the Force that the Jedi and other Sith didn't have, stripping away philosophy and morality alike to lay bare physical and chemical reactions that other Force sensitives rarely considered. Where others saw mystical powers brought about through emotion or surrender to the Force, Plagueis saw transfers of momentum through midichlorians. Where others felt oneness with the universe through meditation and communion with the Force, Plagueis saw a euphoric reaction to the activation and nurturing of midichlorians. 
It all came down to the midichlorians for him, and that was why he was able to achieve what other force users could not. To Plagueis, all those before him who attempted to achieve immortality through the force failed because they had approached the matter through the lens of mysticism. On the flip side, he believed that all non-force related attempts at immortality had failed because they didn't consider the force and the role midichlorians played in the body. He saw life, like the force itself, as a mere chemical reaction with no metaphysical significance and he approached the issue of immortality by looking for ways to prolong that reaction indefinitely. He succeeded by finding ways to micromanage his own biological processes. We've been referring to this approach to the force as a philosophy thus far, but that wasn't really accurate. Plagueis was essentially anti-philosophical. When it came to the force, he saw no use in anything that wasn't purely scientific, and he eschewed any sort of mysticism, mortality, and ideology beyond the basic tenets of Sith belief. What ideology he had, he rationalized as being scientifically informed conclusions about the nature of the universe. Now to answer our main question, was Plagueis onto something? Obviously, his views weren't perfect at the very least. Some of what he rationalized as scientific conclusions were really just ideology, including pretty much everything that made him a Sith. Plagueis wholeheartedly believed he was better and more deserving than everyone else, and that colored his general outlook. It led him to the belief that the purpose of the weak was to serve the strong, for example. Obviously, we're not going to be giving those sorts of ideas any credence. It's the materialist approach to the Force we find interesting. Plagueis' outlook on the Force definitely allowed him to see and understand things that the Jedi and other Sith could not. At the end of the day, most of what we think about as the Force really was a set of physical reactions, and by examining the Force through that lens, Plagueis was able to achieve unprecedented levels of control over life and death. However, Plagueis was wrong in his belief that the Force was only a material phenomenon. His total denial of the metaphysical and philosophical sides of the Force were an error. Let's think back to Force Ghosts, for example. As we mentioned earlier, Plagueis actually ran into a spirit on Korriban at one point, but he continued to deny the existence of Force Ghosts after the fact, writing in his journal that he figured the whole thing was probably just an hallucination or something. This is an extraordinarily lame explanation, and it also doesn't hold up to scrutiny. As we can see from the events of the original trilogy, Force ghosts were not only undeniably real, but were also clearly the spirits of individuals they appeared as. They weren't hallucinations, they weren't imposters, and in the Star Wars universe, they were verifiable proof of life after death. Plagueis' ideology had no answer for phenomena like this. All Plagueis could really do was weakly deny they existed. His view of life and consciousness as solely chemical processes with no metaphysical significance kind of falls apart when confronted with consciousness persisting after the death and destruction of their bodies. Plagueis understood aspects of the Force better than anyone else, but he failed to understand the whole of the Force, especially its will. So, did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the not-so-wise after all? I thought so. It's the story we just told you. Now it's your turn to tell stories we wouldn't hear from the Jedi. What do you think of Plagueis' view of the Force? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.